Welcome to your Daily Writing Habit, episode number 323. If you're writing a book or thinking about it, or maybe you've started writing your book, but you're having some trouble getting it done, or perhaps you're at the stage where you need help reaching more people to let them know about your book, you are in the right place. <clears throat> Excuse me. Good morning and happy Friday. I'm your host, Christine Whitmarsh. If you're looking for me online, look for Christine Inc., I-N-K, like the stuff you write with. That's kind of how I'm known on all those social media places, Christine Inc., Every day, I am sharing with you the writing habits I've learned over my 18 years as a ghostwriter, book coach, and author. I have found that three things in particular have a huge impact on your success as an author, and they can turn someone who barely considers themselves to be a writer into a published author. Those three things are writing fundamentals, productivity, and mindset habits. Here's today's quote. Edit your manuscript until your fingers bleed and you have memorized every last word. Then, when you are certain you are on the verge of insanity, edit one more time. (laughs) That is from C.K. Webb. Guess what I'm talking about today? (laughs) Once again, good morning, happy Friday. It is FAQs Friday, where I answer your frequently asked questions. Whatever book-related questions are on your mind, writing fundamentals, productivity, mindset, marketing, you ask it, and I will do my best to answer it here every Friday. And today's question comes from my Ink Authors group on Facebook, and it's a very detailed one that I'm going to do my best to answer here. So here is the question. So I have just finished what I thought to be the fifth and final round of editing, yet I still have to do more. What I am wondering is how you get through the edits. I had no problem with the book. It pretty much only took me two months to write. But the editing is taking months because I just don't want to do it. I guess it must be the other side of the brain. I'm ready to start writing my second book, but the editing of the first one is just weighing me down. Do you use external editors or any other assistants? All right, that is quite the question. A very common one. I'm sure many of you can relate to, any of any of us who have ever, ever edited, our, edited our, our own work, or those of you who are in the editing phase right now, hang in there. <laughs> so let's break down the question bit by bit, starting with what she said, what I thought to be the fifth and final round of editing. And I know there are a few of you out there, especially seasoned authors, who are probably getting quite the chuckle from that, what you thought was going to be the last round of editing. <laughs> because the fact is, if left to our own vices, as authors, we could edit our work forever never allowing our manuscripts to see the light of day, meaning being published. So as many of you know by now, I'm a huge process person. So for editing, this means having a clearly defined list of editing goals before you dive in. Your list will contain a mix of big picture edits as well as minor, kind of like line edit stuff, like an overused word that you find yourself. I think we all have words that are on our overused word list. So that would be an example of a minor edit. A big picture edit would be, you know, is the story in the proper order? Is this character needed? Or for nonfiction, you know, is the flow of the lessons, you know, the best way to get the reader from point A to point B? That's, those are examples of big picture items. So the key here is to make sure that you include everything on your list and then divide your list of editing objectives into rounds. So with like items. So it's better to kind of do one round with a whole bunch of big picture stuff and then another round with a bunch of little picture, you know, little minor line edit things and so on. So maybe two rounds of each seems to be a good average. So again, put everything you can possibly think of on your list of edits. Then, here's the important part, here's that mindset part, make an agreement with yourself that this list is it. This list is an example of your conditions for satisfaction. Tell yourself you will be satisfied once you do all the things on the list. That once you complete the items on this list, you will hand your manuscript off to a professional editor and let them take it from there. And you will do this with only a minimum amount of procrastination, crying, and throwing things. (laughs) So that's the first part is the process of having a process. It gives you an end point. Now you're not editing forever. Now you're only editing until everything on your list has been done. And then you're saying, that's it. I promised myself that would be it. And now I'm handing it off to an editor. So here's the next part of the question. And she said, but the editing is taking months because I just don't want to do it. I guess it must be the other side of the brain. I'm ready to start writing my second book, but the editing of the first one is just weighing me down. All right. Well, I think it's not too far from the truth that editing uses a different part of the brain than writing. I don't think technically it's like, you know, left versus right brain, but it is definitely a different mental process. 
And it can be a challenging one, especially by round number five, like the one that she's in. (laughs) For me, it's always been about acknowledging that and coming to peace with the fact that editing and rewriting, it's a different type of creativity than writing. It's about embracing the differences and finding things I like about the process. So you really have to not compare editing to writing. You're going to love, hopefully, you're going to love editing for a completely different reason than why you love writing. If you compare it and you say, I had so much fun writing my book because of this, this, and this, and now I don't get to do those things anymore, so I hate editing. It's really unfair because they're two completely different things. So for instance, here's some, uh, you know, some things that I love about editing, the opportunity to discover new things about the manuscript and to improve upon my work. So it's those discoveries that can be super fun. This obviously doesn't exist in the writing process where you're reading your work for the, you know, the second, third, fourth, fifth time, and you're finding new discoveries and you're finding new ways to improve upon yourself. So you presumably had many reasons for enjoying the process of writing. Now with editing, it's about discovering and seeking out entirely new reasons. And this might take some thought on your part, but there are, trust me, there are reasons to be found. There are some things about editing that don't exist in writing that are like secret little exciting gems. And the editing part of your brain is just as capable as the writing part of your brain. It just operates a little differently, so it takes a little getting used to. But just like writing, it's a process that requires patience, a regular habit, curiosity, and a process. And I just had another thought because I happen to know the gal who left this question on my Ink Authors group, and I know that she's one of my fellow aerialists. And I think editing and writing, maybe it's like a different apparatus. So, you know, if we're, you know, used to trapeze and then all of a sudden we're doing, you know, aerial hammock or or silks, you know, same, you know, very similar aerialist principles, but different joys to be found. So I'm just going to tell you directly though that the person who wrote the question, consider it a different aerial apparatus. So anyway, I digress. Of course, I always digress. <laughs> so you don't, here's the next point. You don't need to feel like you're not allowed to start working on your second book while your first one is still in edits. I know that was a part of your question here is, you know, you felt too guilty to move on to your second book. It's, this is a matter of simply separating your habits and scheduling the editing of book one at a different time on your calendar than working on book two. Now remember, just as with all habits, if the time is scheduled on your calendar, you're more likely to get it done. So I would probably, in this case, in your case, I would schedule two editing sessions on book one for every, you know, one writing session on book two so like two to one just because I can tell that you're anxious to reach the finish line on book one so just doing you know twice as many sessions on your calendar for book one as book two that will help you out because that will obviously weigh your time in favor of book one but also you still get to play with book two so that's fun (laughs) so finally to your questions do you use external editors or any other assistance and the answer is yes I always use external editors, and there's a whole other conversation there, but the short answer is I would never publish a book that only my eyes have been on. I'm going to say that again. I would never publish a book that only my eyes have been on. And I'm talking about not just, you know, glancing at it or, you know, people you know reading a couple chapters here and there. I'm talking about the entire line by line, the entire manuscript. If I'm the only one that has seen every word of my book, it's not ready to publish. There are so many things that we miss in our own work. Also keep in mind that the quality bar of publishing and self-publishing has been steadily on the rise for years now with how crowded the marketplace is. So in order to stand out, quality is a must. It's not even optional. And that means hiring a professional editor. So I hope that answers your question. So your, your many questions, this is very good. This is a nice comprehensive FAQs Friday. So if any of the rest of you have a question you'd like me to answer on a future FAQs Friday episode, submit it either through my website, christine-inc.com, the contact page, or through my Inc. Authors group on Facebook is another great place to reach me. So as always, thank you for joining me here on Your Daily Writing Habit, where I'm helping you write and finish writing an awesome book. And if you know someone else who wants to write and finish writing an awesome book, please let them know about this show. They can pick it up wherever they get podcasts or on their Amazon Alexa device under Flash Briefing Skills. Until tomorrow, happy writing.